Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary. Today I'll be reacting to Jordan Peterson best comeback. So without further ado, let's get started. I want to go talk to Peterson. <laughs> Peterson, do you have any comments on the Nazi presence at your protest? The presence of Nazis and white supremacists assaulting people at your protest. Do you have any comment on that? Yeah, I don't like Nazis. And I'm sure, I mean, I would hope that if I were a, a student of Dr. Peterson, that he would refer to me as, a, um, as she and wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, a personal pronoun preference still is a preference for what language other people use. And at the end of the day, I don't uh, have ultimate control of, over what Dr. Peterson uh, what the language he chooses to use, or anybody else for that matters, that's that's up to them. Okay, let me and find the out then. Arises, let me let me find out. If she were a student of yours, what would you call her? She. You would. Okay. We've established that. Why should your right? There's not a secular humanist organization or country on the planet that has ever produced as a good thing, an intentional good thing, rapists and murderers. So. Well, that's deb that's highly debatable. That's highly debatable. Actually, I mean, one it's of the absolutely that, true because there's never been a secular humanist government on the planet. I don't know. I think the Soviets were pretty secular No, humanist. they... <laughs> then, well, I know with, that, with, all, with all due apologies, you do not know the first thing about what secular humanism is. You should read the Secular Humanist Manifestos because what happened in Russia in communist countries was an institution of a religious-like structure surrounded around, centered around an individual and forced atheism, none of which is consistent with humanism. The great American philosopher Beyonce knows said that it has been said that racism is so American that if you challenge racism, you look like you're challenging America. We are challenging inequality. We are challenging the refusal to see me as an individual. When we overcome that, have at it, we're all on equal no, plane. So, okay. so, can I, no, I think it's good. good. I think it's good. The body is getting stirred here. So, I've okay. got a couple of questions. So, so let's, let's, your side spoke, so I'm going to go yeah. to Jordan, then to you, Let's Michelle. assume for a moment that I've benefited from my white privilege. Okay, so let's assume that. That's, that's fine. That's yeah, well, assumption. that's what you would say. So, um, um, so let's say mm. here. Let's get precise mm. about this. Okay. Was that in very individual of you? <laughs> let's get precise about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get precise. To what degree is my present level of attainment or achievement a consequence of my white privilege? And I don't mean sort of. I mean, do you mean five percent? Do you mean 15%? Do you mean 25%? Do you mean 75%? And what do you propose I do about it? How about a tax? How about a tax that's like specialized for me so that I can account for my damn privilege? You so that I can stop right hearing right about it. Now, let's get precise about one other thing, okay? We'll get precise about one other thing. Now, precise? Yeah, precise, Preci yes. Mm. And so, if if we can agree, and we haven't, that the left can go too far, which it clearly can, mm -hmm. then how would my worthy opponents precisely define when the left that they stand for has gone too far? You didn't like equity, equality of outcome, I think that's a great marker, but if you have a better suggestion and, and won't sidestep the question, so let's figure out how I can dispense with my white privilege and so that you can tell me when the left has gone too far, since they clearly can. And that's what this debate is about, about political correctness. It's about the left going too far. And I think it's gone too far in many ways. And I'd like to figure out exactly how and when so the reasonable left could make its ascendance again and we could quit all this nonsense. When you talk about, you know, feminizing men, it almost sounds derogatory. It's almost as if you're saying that to be feminine or to express any sort of femininity is actually inferior to masculinity. Um, and I think that is a huge problem even with, within the language that we use. You know, when you say, don't be such a girl, don't be such a pussy, the, the greatest insults that men can give each other tend to have feminine or origins like you know as I said pussy or faggot um, or anything like that and I think again that speaks to um, a very systematic um, inequality uh, between the genders um, and, yeah, and you attributed the the, the uh, rates of mental illness among men to their inability to express say sentimental emotions and well, I don't think there's a shred of clinical evidence to support well, that stance. I, sorry um, yeah, go no 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 what well, well I don't think there's a shred of evidence I mean, to support that stance. The kind of violence, for example, that I, Lawrence is discussing is a consequence of competitive um, 
competitive violence a young, among young men. As the, as as the I think there is some evidence that men find it yes. difficult to talk about things and that, that um, and they also ways in which you can help out. young men to they, talk about they, things. And that's the evidence for yeah. the differential rates of, of men. You know, there's something I love about, you know, Pedersen. I just love how confident he is about the lean issues, you know. He's the kind of person that believes in what he speaks about and he don't care how you twist the question, how you bring it to him, he's definitely going to answer you the way he deem fit, okay? And that's what makes him, you know, stand out from the rest because he's always prepared, you know, he's not trying to attack you, he just, you know, brings sense out of each answers he gives. And that's what, you know, makes people marvel, you know. Sometimes you, you throw the question in a way that you want to confuse him and at the end of the day, he finds his way around it. I just feel it's a gift that not everyone has. Due to the fact that he has been you know interviewed a whole lot of time and he believes in what he he, he 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 speak about so he knows how to defend himself it does no matter how you twist the question to him he will definitely get his way around it i just love that about him guys and I also, I, don't I, know, so. I also don't think i um when you're talking about things being so innate um uh, you know, I mean, Judith Butler would have said that, you know, gender is a construct, that gender is a performance. Mm -hmm. um, well, Judith Butler look, doesn't know what she's talking about in the least, so well, I don't accept that. I mean, that that's interesting, a, but I, I, she's I, I, I agree with She's no scientist, she doesn't know the well, psychological then if you look at someone literature. Like and this is all under the influence, you say, of postmodernism and neo-Marxism. Neo yeah, but well, aren't those things two separate things? They're completely separate. Mm. You know, and this is something I've been criticized for. Dr. Peterson doesn't understand the difference between neo-Marxism and, and, and postmodernism. It's like, I understand the difference perfectly well. It isn't me that's conflating them. It turns out that the people who push postmodern doctrines in the university almost al always ally themselves with a Marxist viewpoint. Mm -hmm. And that is logically incoherent. But I would say the postmodernists really don't give a damn for logical coherence because they regard that as part of the oppressive, patriarchal, Eurocentric view of the world. The idea that there's an objective reality and all of that, and that you can deal with it with logic. You accept this oppression narrative without question. You know, a hundred and twenty. I don't. Years ago, I don't accept anything without question. I'm just telling you a fact. That's not a fact. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Women were women were expected to stay home and take care of the kids and cook a meal. That's a f women didn't have reliable birth control until 1960. You know, don't you think that played a role? Don't you think the fact that they they didn't have reliable care for Are you their blaming cycles, women for not being they, allowed to lead countries to lead nations because they didn't? They were allowed to lead nations. There were queens in many countries. I think you have no idea how much this oppression narrative has saturated your thinking. Why do you think it is that so much of what you say is so very popular with the alt-right? It isn't. And you don't have any evidence for that at all. Uh, well, any I'm, more than the I'm, evidence that alt-right people Daily watch Storm, this show. Neonite yeah, website, that's Savior, the one I'm going on. Civilization. Oh, well, there was, that was all taken apart today by a number of Jewish publications, by the way, showing that, first of all, that was all satirical commentary on the part of the alt-right, directed at taking me down for example, and there was an alt-right article yesterday published t saying that I was a Jewish stooge and shill. So well, this is absolute nonsense, and I don't, uh, I, I don't appeal primarily to the alt-right. There's no evidence for that at all. It's the, it's the no, proclivity I never said, of... I never, said pr pr I never said primarily, um, yeah. Jordan. What I'm interested in is why you think that you get the reaction that you do from the alt-right, looking at you know, the Kathy Newman documentary. Uh, what the reaction? The inter interview. There's 10 there was million people lot, watched that awful, and commented awful, on it. I'm, I'm talking about what I saw, mm. and I'm curious to know what your reaction was to the, to the, to the glee with which the alt-right seized upon uh, that well, issue. I don't should accept we, the... Should we do with the death threats? I mean, she had, yeah, I think, a dozen I don't accept the threats. concept that it was the alt-right that was doing this. There were 10 million people who commented on that video, and about 95% of them commented negatively on Kathy Newman's behaviour. You think there's 10 million alt-right trolls watching that? Uh, I see very little of the pursuit of justice characterizing the modern university. I see a tremendous amount of the pursuit of vengeance for things that don't even deserve to have vengeance extracted for them. So give me an example of what doesn't deserve vengeance. How about the existence of the patriarchy? You, but you don't mean now that women have not suffered injustices in Britain. Virginia Woolf couldn't go to university, or rather she couldn't get a degree. Women have been excluded in all kinds of ways from social situations, have they not? Yes, but 
people have been excluded from social situations in all kinds of ways. And I don't like this the narrative, the, the social historical injustice narrative as a way of looking at the world. The way that, that young people now are taught about the relationships between men and women throughout history is that the fundamental narrative is that men oppressed women throughout the course of history. And then that kind of came to an end when everybody woke up in 1964. No, no, no. Yeah, no, really, no, that's no, really it. No, listen, I don't know what it's like in Canadian universities... But that's a, what I call, and I forgive this European reference, mm -hmm. that's a kind of punch and Judy way of seeing it. That is not how universities as a whole operate. Well, that's and, how they operate in Canada. We well, had the biggest scandal in Canadian university history last year when a graduate student was hauled in front of a Maoist inquisition for daring to show a five-minute video of me discussing issues like this on public television. The universities are in far worse shape. Maybe they're not in such bad shape and the UK as they are in, in North America, but they're in plenty bad shape in North America. Forgive me, and I'm sorry you were involved, but that is not the biggest scandal. The biggest scandal will be the number, for instance, of suicides that are prevalent amongst undergraduates. The fact that one academic was holed up, in my view, inappropriately for doing what was done is not the biggest scandal. You're inflating it's things. It's not the biggest or... tragedy. The, but the suicides the are a bigger tragedy, but it was certainly the biggest scandal. Canadian universities don't make international news. Your background, it's pretty earthy. But how did you connect that with your current political perspective? What, you said that you became disillusioned with socialism. I became disillusioned with ideology. I with ideology say. in general. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, that's certainly not something that's changed. I mean, I don't like ideologues. Well, first of all... You don't have a purpose, so. Guys, I just love, like I said before, how he tackled the situation. You know, I know um, we, I, I believe in evolution, you see, things change. At a certain point in time, women, they were not given the right to vote. And all of a sudden, we saw it as, nah, it's not supposed to be like that. I think they deserve that right. Or at a certain time, women were not given some job opportunity because of, you know, they undermine them because of their gender and all. But at it got to a certain point which they started doing some things. You know, I don't really believe the saying that what a man can do, a woman can do better because there are some work that a man can do that a woman cannot do, you know. And there are some work that a woman can do that men, even if they try to do it, they get frustrated because, you know, women are very, very patient individuals. They can, you know, be very patient to make sure things have been done. And some group of men, we are not that patient. We want something to be done instantly. And so there, we are just two different people. We are not supposed to be competing for roles or, you know, or, or kind of work to do. We just need to just be us, you know, do what you know how to do best. I don't believe this gender is more superior than this gender. The thing is, we are all superior in our own way, depending on how we say things, you know. It that's that's just my take in it.